Good morning, Joel. Well, you know, I'm coming to you live from Mint Out Dow Diamond and um, get ready for season nine of Loons Baseball. I'm hoping our viewers can see this. Joel, can you see that vehicle there stuck on the off ramp? This is an actual piece of the World Trade Center brought here from New York, and it's an opportunity for people to come here and actually feel. Good morning, everyone. Well, you know, it's cold outside, but today I've swapped my snow pants for a more elegant look. Governor Rick Snyder highlighted this one of a kind program during his state of the state address. And you know, well right now causing a ruckus is Jack Stock here. Come on over to the television screen and take a look at what I'm holding up. This is a light up the city t-shirt. New details are expected this morning following a controversy inside the Genesee County Clerk's Office. Let's show folks what you have. You One of the th items that you brought is oatmeal and I love oatmeal. I hope we can see. Now you actually have some ideas on how you can make it really yummy for kids. Tell us about it. You have peanut yeah. butter, cinnamon, and um, I'll scoop it in while you talk about it. You can deliver that all through August mm -hmm. and to September. Get rid of the humidity yeah. and every weekend sunshine, especially mm -hmm. in September when the kids go back to school and mm -hmm. mom and dad I want to keep them out of the house for the weekend. 16 year old Emma Hudson from Grand Blanc reminds us how happiness can be a choice despite the hardship life may bring. I'm 16 years old and I'm a survivor, surviving leukemia. When Emma was 11, she learned she had cancer, a type of leukemia that is most resistant to chemotherapy. Her battle to live had begun, but one thing hadn't changed her spirit. She's always been a very old soul. She's always had that extra special something about her that, you know, kind of sets her above the rest. Why, why worry about something that you can't change? I was given two choices. To lay on the couch and mope about something that, you know, could possibly take my life, or get up, fight it, and live, because there's nothing else that I can do. All the intense chemotherapy and radiation wasn't enough. She needed a bone marrow transplant. Little did she know that Lifeline would fly in from Texas. You know, I would do it again in a heartbeat, and I don't recall uh, pain or discomfort or any reason not to do it. George Smith's was a perfect match. The two had only communicated on Facebook until <laughs> she finally met the man who saved her life. I've never even heard his voice. Um, so, you know, saying, Emma, I'm your donor, and I'm like, wait, what? I think I'm having a heart attack, mildly, but it was, it was fun. It was a long time coming. These days, Emma is doing well and dreaming about her future, helping others as a nurse. To walk into a room of, something, of someone my age or someone littler and look at their parents or them and say, I know this is hard, but it's possible. 70% of patients with a blood cancer do not have a donor in their family and depend on programs like Be The Match. Emma tells us she encourages as many people as possible to register and possibly save a life and be someone else's George. I probably started smoking when I was about 15 or 16 years old. Now 64 years old, Terry Hosey smoked for about 40 years before quitting but he still wondered if the damage had been done. Oh, you worried about lung cancer and emphysema and all that stuff. Terry's daughter works at Regional Medical Imaging in Flint Township. She asked her dad to take a low dosage CT lung cancer screening. Well, everybody always wants to think that they're never gonna find that, you know, it's not gonna be my family. I had no symptoms, none whatsoever. The results were not what he expected. How bad is it and what's it gonna take? Am I gonna survive this? Terry had stage one lung cancer. His doctor shows us here, the small mass found hiding in his lungs. Less than two years can kill him and you will not discover it till it's too late. The screening is less than a minute long. One breath and four seconds later, Terry just saved his life. How are you feeling? Good. No chemotherapy, no radiation, no anything. That's uh, very exciting news when you only get that. RMI says this test could save many more people. In this community in particular, in Genesee County, in the state of Michigan, is one of the highest rated counties in the state for deaths from lung cancer. For Terry and his family, early detection was key. I don't think if he would have waited till he had signs and symptoms that they could have fixed it. 
In Flint Township, Ilse Lujan Hayes, NBC 25. Meet 12-year-old Tyler Prim. This may look like play, but it's also therapy inside one of the only sensory rooms of its kind in the area. Having a sensory um, therapist or occupational therapist create a sensory profile and provide some activities and exercises that would be most beneficial for the child based on their need. Tyler's family learned he was a child with autism at age 8. It was his behavior in social settings that raised a red flag for his mom. We noticed, as well as his teachers, um, noticed that he was having a hard time interacting with the other kids. But here, at the Autism Support and Resource Center in Burton, kids like Tyler and their families can get the help they need. About 1,000 people living with autism and their families in the county and surrounding areas get training and gather for monthly socials. Among other things, playing on the bolster swing, the ball pit, the trampoline, and the rock climbing wall. It's all fun, but it's also helping Tyler build on his developmental skills. Based on recommendations from an occupational therapist, children are able to use this space to really provide some great therapeutic benefit to them. According to the National Autism Association, autism is now the fastest growing developmental disorder in the United States affecting one in every 68 babies, and one in every 30 boys will be on the spectrum. Tyler's mom says the resource center is a place where she and her son are getting what they need. She gets support. There's always someone around who has been through it, who can give you tips to tell you things to try that might work for your child too. And Tyler is getting a chance at a better quality of life. He feels comfortable being social and he knows that no one's gonna, you know, if he jumps up and down, that's fine. Somebody else is jumping up and down too or flapping their hands or whatever and nobody cares about that. He can just be himself. Ilse Lujan Hayes, NBC 25. Why did this happen to me? Ten-year-old Mitchell Rogers and his older brother Matthew say the pain is still raw. We were really close together and she always saw my homework and stuff. and. She was like a, kind of like a really good friend to me. Sean Rogers shared this home in Grand Blanc with her two sons and husband. She decided to skip a family trip up north after not feeling well. When the boys returned days later, their mother asked to go to the emergency room. Hours later, she was diagnosed with leukemia. It hit you. What do you mean? The family was told the cancer was treatable, but three days later, Sean was dead due to other complications. You know, I told her I loved you, and she said I love you too, and, and I love the boys. And that was her last words. You know, how do you go from that? You know, a sinus infection to leukemia to gone. It was like a haze, kind of, just all confused. Matthew was in the fourth grade at the time and attended the same school where his mother taught, Reed Elementary. Walking by my mom's classroom, and knowing that she wasn't there. Less knew he wasn't equipped to handle the quiet suffering happening inside his home. A friend recommended Ellie's Place, a grieving center for kids and teens. When grieving children suppress those feelings and um, don't share what, what they're thinking, uh, oftentimes it builds up. She says it's important for adults to know the warning signs of child and teen depression. Parents will sometimes have trouble recognizing what could appear like normal teenage behavior. Moodiness, irritability, um, mood swings, um, perhaps some, some poor performance at school where before there wasn't any. So knowing factors linked to depression can also help. A teen who has low self-esteem, lost a loved one, is experiencing family conflicts or has problems with friends and peers can all be red flags. And being around other kids who have experienced similar losses can help. They made me realize that like other kids just like me going through the same thing and I don't feel so bad. It wasn't easy and it didn't happen overnight. We're surviving. It took a few years. It took, it definitely took a few years, but it was two summers ago. We had fun finally for the first time. There's laughter once again in the Roger home. The boys say the pain never completely goes away. 
we help each other out when we're feeling sad and stuff. Like if my dad's crying, then me and Matthew would go over there and like hug him, tell him it's okay.